broadcasting and the channel will be going live here okay it looks like the channel is live the stream is live hello everyone and welcome to adventure on so many levels we're gonna play some dungeons and dragons yeah we are once more into the breach. Yes, I am One Christiana Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis, the Dungeon Master. And indeed, tonight, we are closing the book on our campaign, uh, the, the story of the Heroes of Legend. Last week, we fought the big bad and triumphed, restoring balance between order and chaos in the universe, expelling the demon lord uh, into the, the, the far realm of eternal chaos. And uh, generally speaking, just saving the day. And so today we're going to just find out where, whence, whence the heroes of legend, where, where do they go? What do they do after saving the entire universe? Rocks fall, everyone dies. Yeah. I well, you spoiled it. Now, <laughs> now we're just gonna have to start all over. Episode one, level one, everyone. So let's start the Q and A. <laughs> so, for the last time, Chuch Schubert as Otterkey. Hello, hello. Starla Hutchton as Nirakina Ethu. Greetings and salutations. Jenny Meltzer as Cadence of the Water. How you doing? James Meltzer as Ket of the Sands. I forgot to wear my pants, man. Oh, no. Mark Kilfoyle as Alaric Copperbeard. Nothing's really over if someone writes a story about it. And Vivid Muse as Amethyst. Hey, y'all, I'm, I'm in denial about this last time thing. Can we just pretend it's not the last time? Well, sure. Yeah, cool. that's it's fine. Cool, cool. You never know. <laughs> Let's so, make a plan. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, uh, and, and alas, we were not able to have uh, our Mugen the Magnificent Jadzia Axelrod with us tonight. It is, however, her wife's 40th birthday. So happy birthday, J.R. Blackwell. Birthday. Happy birthday. So... Anyone uh, have any little bits from the last episode that you feel like we want to recap briefly before we start figuring out what comes next? Nero, why don't you mm -hmm. just give your speech again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bunch more people came in in the middle. And and... We'll start with the wrap-up, the overview. <laughs> in the beginning... <laughs> yeah. So, indeed, you fought the Demon Lord, ultimately revealed to be one of the titans from the dawn of the creation of the universe, and uh, saved the, the balance of this multiverse that you call home, and replaced the spirit of Rushama back in the mountain where he belongs, restoring the balance between order and chaos and in a process that might have killed uh, Nira had she done it alone did not because she had her friends with her and so now everything seems to be at peace there's a long pregnant pause as everyone kind of stands there waiting to see if something else is going to happen. Is the demon lord going to suddenly show back up and say, and now you see my final form? No, doesn't seem like it. There's a lot of people just kind of staring in awe. Not entirely sure they understand exactly what happened. But then, just as things seem to start calming down a little bit and an illusion appears 
kind of in the center of uh, where you're all standing. And I think those of you who uh, are magically inclined recognize that you must have triggered a programmed illusion spell that had been cast previously. And in it, you see Zoreth as you knew him, not the child Zoreth that is now in the arms of his mother back towards the back of this cavern. But as he stands there, he's not necessarily making direct eye contact with any of you, but he says, I was always a hole in the universe. But thanks to you, I was where I needed to be. I thought that the only way to fix things was to put them back the way they were before. But you showed me that they could be made better. Now that the hole has been filled, maybe he has a chance and I can let go. I'm already gone, but the best of me stays here with him. Thank you. And then it disappears. I lean into Cat and I'm like, it's a good thing elves live for a really long time, right? Yeah, man, tell me about it. Huh. So I think Nero would turn around and look at the child Zorith and his mother mm -hmm. and uh, kind of walk over to them. And, uh, it's something specific I want to say. <laughs> <clears throat> so for little baby Zoreth, kind of crouch down and look at him. You have a brilliant mind and an infinite world of possibilities before you. So choose wisely. Be the great person you're capable of being. And if you ever need help, all you need to do is ask me. I, I, I saw the message, the story of everything you all did. It's, it's kind of scary, but I, I'm, I'm glad you won. Thanks for helping my mom. He looks up to her and she, she's, She's looking not ambivalent, but concerned. I think that your, your impression of her body language is that she's concerned she's in trouble. He deserves much more than what he got the first time around. So make better choices with your second chance. I didn't always feel like I had a lot of choices, but whatever all that was, I, I don't remember all of it, but I don't, I don't feel the genie in my head anymore. I think the pact is broken. It's well, a bit easier to have choices yeah. that way. Well, I hope you uh, make better ones this time around, if you like. You're welcome to stay within the mountain, either above or below. Um, At this point, if if it's okay, Starla, can I interrupt? Uh, yeah, I just had one more thing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> going to say um i would appreciate it if uh i don't have to fix your mistakes again so okay. uh i don't really know who you are <laughs> <laughs> that's okay you don't have to but i will be watching and then i'm going to step away 
Amethyst is going to, I think, change out of grape sulcoatalus form, I think is what you called it, Christiana, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. Um, and she's going to walk over hesitantly to Zorath and Zorath's mom and very calmly just, you know, say that she's been thinking on this for a while, concerned about what would happen after if we were able to, you know, do all that we'd hope to, and that an amethyst is going to offer to create a space for them, a safe space for them, so that she doesn't have to worry about options or choices. They can just find a place to heal and not worry about money or safety and just be protected. And I know you don't know me, but um, I have a lot of... Um, it would mean a lot to me to be able to protect your child. And I want to make sure that you guys have the best opportunity and it'll probably take you time to understand and trust that. But I don't want you to worry about options and what you have to do to survive right now. I just want you two to heal together. Thank you. I, I might take you up on that. Uh, it does feel like it would feel a little awkward to stay around here. Open invitation anytime, ever, you all need it. It's there. Uh, and I know that my fellows feel the same way. Um, little Zoreth comes up and like hugs you around the, uh, you know, like around the, the belly and, uh, and says, thank you for helping me and my mom. It was my honor. You are a wonderful little boy, and I just really hope I get to know you as you grow. Um, so uh, at this point, you see kind of standing slightly uh, back, a little hesitant, but approaching is the younger version of Melicanth, and just behind her, the rest of her party, um, Queen Talia, the one of the her party, uh, standing a little apart from the others, looking a little frustrated, but you know, still waiting. And uh, Melikanth says, "So, I've heard from myself, and I guess there's two of me now, which seems strange, but." A moment ago, I was worried that the demon was going to wreak havoc all across the plains, and it would appear that a lot happened in the meantime in what seemed like just a moment to me. So, thank you all, and uh, I got the impression from my other self that she did not intend to make further contact with me. So if you talk to her, feel free to give her my thanks as well. Um, we're probably going to go back to Villanocta now. Hmm. That, that's going to be interesting. How do you mean? It's been roughly 110 years since you were last there. Well, and this is where, yeah, Malekanth looks back to Talia again and says, we, we got some of that in whatever that, that incredible message that you all, uh, whatever that was that you did, um, but I, I don't know where else we would go. I'm trying to remember, was Talia originally part of the Tashman Empire? Yep. Yes, but it was basically what, uh, you know, this, this is lore from way back now. So the Baron in Villanocta that you met was her grandson. Um, the whole thing that uh, originally happened is that 
you know, the peace was found between the Empire and uh, Vela um, with that marriage, and it was going reasonably well, but then uh, when she was assassinated, you know, finger quotes, that's <laughs> what led to the war restarting and the, the Empire taking over, which was eventually stabilized again with Villa Nocta being sort of a city-state and the rest of it being officially the Empire. So, yeah, you can imagine that Talia probably has feelings about all of that, but, I mean, <laughs> they don't have any way to go back in time or change anything or anything like that. So, you know, I think they're, you know, absent some other place to go, some other plan, that's where they know. Absent of anyone else saying anything, Amethyst, who's been just sitting and chilling with Zorath and staying out of it. <clears throat> this is actually part of something that would have been a longer plan that Amethyst would have done as part of, you know, I shared it with Christiana. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a good time to ex maybe expand that a little bit and just say to Melikant and the others, you know, things are really complicated. We don't really understand how things are going to be. But I mean, if I'm going to make a space, space for Zorath and his mom, I'll make space for you guys too. Like, if you decide that you need somewhere away from all of that, you know, I, you know, would be happy to, to help provide that because it's going to be a lot of healing for everyone after this. Well, so whether short term or long term, a place to sort it them, out. One of them has family in Ushbithra. Right. But that may not be a pleasant experience coming back 110 years later. It may make people, well, you know, it, it's up to them. I'm just trying to offer an alternative. There's a lot of emotional stuff that could go with what yeah, that looks out to be. I think that uh, they they kind of indicate that, like, they are sort of still absorbing a lot of this, but they certainly are not expecting you to hold their hand through all of this, given that, they only exist here in a saved universe because of everything that you've already done. So they, they're they expecting that it's going to be awkward and they're appreciative of having an option if things are too weird back in Villa Nocta. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that... Um the dragonborn and player memory has failed. Yeah, on Rake, his name. Rake, I think. Yeah, Rake, Rake. is the dragonborn. Yes, yes carrots, uh, carrots. Just wanting to to make sure that he knew he had a daughter and a grandson. Yeah, I, so I think you can you can certainly fill him in on that, and um, he he definitely that's that's something he'll want to follow up on for sure. That's totally good news. <laughs> Well, I mean, from his perspective, why would he not, you know? <laughs> it It is pro probably going to be strange, though, because as Melikanth, the young Melikanth indicates, you, you've you not, like, traveled back in time. There there's du There are duplicates now. And so, you know, the other versions of them did the things they did. Just now there's a transplanted younger version of Melikanth also. And, you know, the other Talia, all of that happened. The other Rake, all of that happened. Just now there's an extra one. Hmm. Well, I'm going to leave that for them to sort out. But if anybody needs anything, I know where I'll be. <laughs> Where's that? ask um i don't plan to go too much further from my mountain except maybe to the surface All right so does anyone else have any scenes or business that your characters would want to deal with in the immediate 
aftermath of the big battle as everyone is still kind of just figuring things out, recovering from the shock of everything. Um, roughly how many people are still alive? Uh, there, there's like, I mean, there's several dozen, um, but a lot of them are relatively beat up because they were fighting each other under the demon Lord's influence. Right. Um, everyone so seems on... pretty like, like no one's still, no one is still fighting there. This was a shock to the system for everyone. And. It's a little... <laughs> so I think one thing that I would try to go around and do, I don't know how many dead there are, mm. um, but I would probably go around and try to revive any of them. Mm -hmm. Well, there there were some, and then there were also some that got sucked through the, the holes, and uh, you, you suspect those are probably beyond recovering. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, just... I guess just the ones that I can see. Um, yeah, my magic isn't entirely depleted, but what I've got left, um, I would probably put towards that in yeah. as much as I could. So without additional instruction, a lot of these um, dark elves look like they uh, are not sticking around here. They're not quite sure what comes next for them like they they don't seem unhappy about the outcome but they also seem pretty unsure about what is coming next and they look like they're not gonna hang out to you know hang around yeah, to find out I don't, I don't really want them to leave <laughs> i have plans <laughs> okay <laughs> You should say something then. Well, you, you, <laughs> it looks like while you're doing some of this other stuff, right. like some of them are already like, block that entrance. Don't let them go. Who who are you I'm talking to? Uh, but my my friends here. Okay. Yeah, I'll... Like, guys. Well, maybe we could <laughs> big scary we not make it now. scary. But like, yeah, we like... don't have to be scary when we do it. We could be like, hey guys, you know, let's not like one demon lord leaves and six monsters remain you know let's give him a minute right. some kindness we should probably explain that otterkey's not actually evil that wasn't yeah. really him <laughs> good uh, point we looked very different uh they believe it or not don't actually remember that part because they were still time frozen good don't continue not to remember that part I'm sorry I mentioned it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so the idea here is that they're... <sighs> Prisoners seems the wrong word, but they are going to be detained. Um... So without wanting to mess. make it all about dice or anything, I think you're mm -hmm. going to find that challenging. You've got several dozen people that... You, you need to give them some reason to stay or else they're not going to. Um, do we still have some of that soap left? I mean, probably, <laughs> yeah. All right, so here is basically what I have in mind. There was a lot of harm caused here. And I believe that a agreement can be come to where they it feels fair to them but also the harm that's been done can be made up for they need to account for their actions and i don't want this to become a point of like violence um I'm looking kind of for peaceful surrender um i mean they, yeah just between you and me Right now, you're making it sound like you're going to take them all to jail, and they don't feel like they deserve that. So I'm not sure what you're planning to do. So the impression you get here. talking to them <laughs> is that they feel like they were deceived by the demon lord that obviously there was a lot more going on that they didn't fully understand. But from their perspective, it was 
you know, Rushama that had grown paranoid and evil that drove them to it. And they, right. were, they were reaching out to anyone they thought would help them. Right. So what I need to explain here is that I don't want to keep them captive, but they are going to have a difficult time reintegrating back into the world. And so this is as much to, uh, for their safety as it is everyone else's, because the people that come from here are not going to be trusted by the people outside. So it is in their best interest to kind of come along peacefully. I don't want to force the issue, but like if I have to. Well, so I guess what that's what I'm saying, though, is that I don't a lot of them are very scared of you now in a way they weren't before. Because they feel like they thought this was a big, oh, to save the universe and like, oh, that's great. But now you're also going to put us in jail or something, and we don't know what that is. And some of them are going to try to leave because they don't understand what it is that you're asking of them. You're saying, don't go anywhere. We're going to do something. And, oh, it's for your benefit. Really like, going, you're, you're really not really selling them vary. on this. It's really going to vary dependent upon, like, what their involvement was. Like, if this was, like, if they were part of the actual summoning, like, <clears throat> their main idea like it, it's kind of like i would have to talk to every individual person and be like what is your role in this what do you believe now you know it's i mean i can't like so and i don't want to go through that all one judgment on, on <laughs> your subjects yeah. it's it's not well and it's not even that it's just <laughs> to, i want to i want to find the best that's what it solution. sounds like it does well, sound like find, that <laughs> i want to find the best solution that's going to keep um, them safe, but also everyone else safe as well. So you're talking about because it's it's. I'm not. Maybe really we could set up special want. little camps and we could put them in the. No, no, <laughs> no. But like, are you talking? No, but I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> just trying to understand. You're talking about kind of like setting a stage for peaceful reemergence into society yes. for them because right outside okay. the door are is a warring faction, right? Well, there may be really angry clear. mobs out there. You have but they not did been... hear the prayer. Right? Didn't they also hear the prayer of the people further out? Isn't that the point? So everybody would know the story? Well, yes, but they're also saying, like, so that was a whole thing, but, like, what happens to us now? And all they've really been told so far is you're not allowed to leave, and you don't get to leave until we decide you get to leave based on criteria what we have not explained have to you. To yeah, well, because we scary. have to decide what happens to these people is the thing. And I don't want them just like running loose and like you're presenting it gonna... in a scary way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Amethyst is going to play mom and kind of summon a bunch of herds of puppies and cute things to kind of frolic around as emotional support animals for everybody while we figure this out. Because I don't think I don't I don't think Nira means it the way that it sounds. But I, I think I'm not, to. Them. I'm not like looking to kill them. That's not what's right. going on here. Right. Well, but you're <laughs> but detaining them. You're saying they're not allowed to leave or, or else. Like yeah. you're saying, they, I don't want to violence, but like you're implying that if they to don't want to stay. I'm not going yeah. to let them just run wild. Like, How are, oh, what are you going to do about now? it? Because it's not fine. It's well, not some of fine them want right to leave. <laughs> what are you going to do sure. about it? Our, All the armies just need to that be we use our words. go home. Yeah. What about calm emotions? I feel, I feel like that. Does anybody have that? Can we cast that? I do that? not have that arm to know. <laughs> Does, can anybody cast that on Mira? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Don't get mad. Wait, I'm not sure where you're coming from right now, Mira Kina. This has all been pretty shaking up for everybody here. But I think they just want to go home. They want to rest. That's they want I'm to be saying. with their families. They just go home. It's been 110 years. And if they show up in this state, people will know that they are part of what caused all of this. And that is dangerous for them. Then we don't have to hold them. We have to explain to everyone else. Well, but until we, we have to all leave as a group, then, is what, <laughs> what I'm saying. We can't just like, oh, okay, scamper off. Like, we can't. We can't do that. <laughs> then we can go with them. It's better than holding them here. 
They're going to I'm listen to at least some of us. They're not you probably all intending more than to go any. to the same place. This well, is a group of people home. that like some, you know, so I think that you, based on what you learned about that whole thing and the, you know, the, the understanding of the nature of that demon is that like its whole influence was that it gradually infected them all with the belief that that was the way to go. They were reaching out for someone to help them. And the person that promised to help them infected them with its, you know, evil corruption. And now they've been freed of that and are being told, but now we get to decide when it's okay for you to leave. And it's for your own good, but you don't have a choice in the matter. We need to tell everybody I mean, else, not these people. What is the alternative? Hmm. Send another message, not entirely dissimilar to what we did before. Carry that message forward and make sure that people understand that these people are victims. Didn't, didn't we include that in the original message? Like, look, this whole thing happened and these people were like sort of taken out of time for all this time. I mean, isn't that something that everybody would already understand? It was certainly implied. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We can make sure it's clear. Look, guys, I know you're trying to do all the right things, but we did so much right things and like. I'm tired, man. Like, don't you want to, like, sit down and be like, wow, we saved the world? Uh, I can use a drink, done. too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel fit as a fiddle, only slightly slashed and burned. Well, yeah, but you're you, and that's just how you are. But, I mean, you know, the rest of us are mortal, man. Worst <laughs> comes to worst, I do have a wish spell. Hmm. I wonder what would happen there if there has been something? so much yeah. death and violence. I'm just, I want, I want to prevent any more of that and just make this as smooth yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah totally I think, get that. I think what you're finding though is that while there are some of them that are interested in trying to reintegrate to the rest of the society as they knew it, there are some of them who are saying. We have been imprisoned for generations beneath this mountain and we don't want to stay here anymore. And you're telling us we have to because you're blaming us for something that we feel like we didn't have a lot of choice in. And so they, they want to leave and they feel like you're threatening them with violence unless they stay. Nira, you can't save everybody. Well, yeah, I was. I, I mean, you I already did say that. You, you've done what you can. You know, I mean, the world is not the perfect place. It's it's going to continue turning long after we're gone. There's going to be revolts and rebellions and war and famine. We can't save it all. We've already made enemies, though, and I would like to prevent any more. It's not going to happen in a flash. It's going to take time. It's the and, hard work. And they're traumatized, Nira. They're traumatized. We have to be sensitive to that, or else what are we? They're traumatized? They're traumatized? We all are, but they are too, and we can't ignore that. If you want to yeah. interview people, I won't stop you, but we can't scare them and intimidate them and imprison them. I won't. Um, I want to give them refuge. Victims. I want to give them refuge, and I won't imprison them. And at that moment, Amethyst says, anybody that needs safe refuge while you figure things out, you have it. I grant it. Separate from anything else that occurs. You know what? Fine. Let's just go. I'm going to walk out of this damn cave and I'm just leaving. I'm done. <laughs> I did my thing. I'm gone. Bye. She's had a long day. We all we'll have. excuses for her. We all had a long day. Man. We all have, Alaric. Yeah. And she's as traumatized by all of this as the rest of us so she needs to do what she needs to do but you know 
we still have to be compassionate. I know she would want to be compassionate. She was trying to be compassionate. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. That was what your compassion looks like right now. Wait, that sounds bad the way I said that. <laughs> um, I think, Nira, as you are walking away, you feel a little bit of a whisper in the back of your mind just to say, even with good intentions, it's important not to repeat the mistakes of the past. I once imprisoned the Dark Elves beneath the mountain for what I thought were good reasons. I wasn't trying to imprison anybody like for a long period of time, just wanted to talk to them and make sure they weren't all like, whatever, whatever, they can just go. I don't care, whatever, I'm done. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> if they wreak havoc and summon another demon into this universe, be it all on your heads. <laughs> no, be it on their heads. We are not responsible for them anymore. <laughs> nope. Like we don't have, like we aren't responsible for the good or the bad that happens to them. I already left. I'm talking to Starla. <laughs> God damn it. Rushama, damn it. <laughs> Can't hear you. La, 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 la. Look, man. Demons come. Demons go. We fought this demon. There's going to be more demons. Let somebody, let somebody else fight them. Yeah, I'm, do I'm done. I'm done. I'm yeah. I love you all. I'm glad we met. Thank you for unfreezing me. But man, I'm tired. Yeah. Um, I want to go home. I'm glad we got to save this world together. The next world, it's for somebody else to save. Is that your wish? No. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> Where did you get peanuts, man? I think you wished for them. I raided the demon horde. <laughs> Residual energy. Damn it. Mm -hmm. I, I can respect that. This has been... This is... Yeah. This has yeah. been a lot. We've been Family. at this for four years, man. But really, in game, it's been like two weeks. But <laughs> yeah, you know, man... <laughs> It's been a long two weeks, right? It's like pandemic weeks. Like, <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get. I get what Nira wants. I really do. But like a great bard once sang to me, "You can't always get what you want, but if you try, sometimes, like we just did, we get what we need." Nira Ooh. hollers back down the hall. Are you guys coming or what? You didn't seem <laughs> like you were saying. inviting them to follow you. <laughs> yeah. Do you want us to? Oh. We're kind of scared right. of you right now. Yeah. You're scary. Is it safe? I think she needs space. I Agreed. She just mm. asked you to follow her, man. Uh, no. Alaric, you should I'll follow go. her. I mean, if y'all want to stay in the cave, that's on you. But like, Well, I mean, we have all these confused <laughs> elves now. <laughs> <laughs> so well, they Amethyst said, they, said they were done they said they were good <laughs> Amethyst is going to to I don't know DM them her contact info or whatever you do here so that they can reach her and find her and um, is are there any that feel like they need refuge right away Christiana um, they... like, that have nowhere to go Uh. I, th I think there are some that just sort of feel like they don't know where else they would go and they don't necessarily have like a plan, mm -hmm. but they do trust you based on everything that's happened. So I'm, I'm going to be, um, I guess I'll concierge for them. <laughs> All right. I'd like to find um, if you can like, specify where we are and how that how she could find a non political not fought over territory for them that's you know 
really close by, not well, like necessarily down the hall, but we're not know. talking about like hundreds and hundreds of people. Right. Um, but, okay. um, but a couple of dozen and like they, they're fine to just kind of, um, like they, they can sort of wait for a time in some space. If you just know to get back to them or something mm -hmm. like that, they can uh, mm -hmm. arrange for that. If you're not ready to have a place to transport them to right away. Yeah. So Amethyst will just kind of let them figure out what the rest of them are doing. And she's going to busy herself with details of that for now. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, we can see what they're doing. <laughs> I'm going to conjure a little pig for Aww. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Those of you not watching the video missed a, a glorious little guinea pig. Uh, so Zorath and uh, his mother, incidentally, are are in that group. They they seem interested in what refuge you might have to offer. Definitely okay. help out with that mm -hmm. planning gig. Yeah. I don't have anything else really to do. So they um, they they say that they can um, like. Yeah, I think they're they're not sure where to go. So, like, if, if you're all heading back to, like, the main Dark Elf City, I don't know if you, you can just sort of... You are pretty confident that at least in the short term, you could just ask for whatever you wanted there and get it. Okay. But it's also a little bit unclear what the status of that city is going to be because when right. you left it time frozen, it had been occupied by the High Elves and, yeah. and uh, was pretty much on lockdown. I think Amethyst is going to count on the others to figure that part out because we know that Nir is focused on that part. Um, so she's going to um, just be spending the time assessing what it is they need, what it is they want, and getting a sense longer term, short term, immediate, you know, what they need. Mm -hmm. But yeah. her, her, her ideas of a safe place are just growing and growing exponentially and bigger as she talks to each person yeah so definitely like as as you would return to that uh the the dark elf city you like everyone got that same message and so there's a common understanding of some of the background of all of this and it has certainly changed a lot of people's thoughts and feelings about what was going on but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone shares their opinion about um, what should happen next. To be sure, if you're heading back there, you you find that um, at the very least, the Dark Elves want the High Elves to not be occupying their city anymore. Um, it's one of those things where they're not necessarily like fighting to leave, but there there's a little bit of a perspective of see you've been shown that you were wrong for why you even came here and that it wasn't our fault and that you should st stop occupying our city for those reasons um, whereas the high elves are feeling a little bit awkward about elements of that but also just like does that mean they're all just marching back to the surface or what's the plan there everyone's a little confused about what should happen next well, I would definitely head directly for, um, I guess, where we left my mother in, like, the council chambers mm -hmm. or whatever that, that tower place was. And uh, it's time to negotiate some peace. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what that looks like from Nero. Probably involves lightning, but... <laughs> <laughs> They I are going to get along, damn it. I'm hoping for it. Please, please, let there be lightning. Just I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um since the portals are all closed now, like there are no more portals, would Cadence be able to use the detect portal spell that she used to have to find a branch of the tree if she wanted to? Well, right, yeah. So there, there's no more of these, like these artificial, like tears, the fissures. But as far as you can tell, the tree is back to operating the way it used to. And can she... she... Sorry. Can she sense like a branch anywhere nearby? Yeah. Okay. Um, Whoa, babies. Crazy. She's actually going to uh, 
approach Nira and say, I know that this is all really important to you, but we've been waiting to go home for a very long time. I know you have. So maybe when all this is taken care of, you can come and visit us. I'd like that. Actually, I was thinking maybe a, a little ways down the road, like everything's going to be up in the air here for a while, but when things kind of calm down, um, I thought maybe I could come and see you and your mother. And I, I can't, I, I think it's probably been too long for any resurrections, but I might be able to find the magic to allow you to speak with your father one more time. If it's something you would want, I, I won't force the issue. I have to think about it, but... The offer does stand. Thank you. Um, and you're always welcome on my mountain. Both you and Kat. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for saving us. Well, I think you helped a little bit. <laughs> um... I'm not, I mean, Amethyst is busy with her negotiations, and I have no idea what Alaric is doing. Probably something well, trying to, you know, gather people to Nira. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm actually going to turn around and find Ket. Okay, I'm here. You, um, you ready to go home? Man, I've been ready since. Yeah, so I'm ready. Okay, let's go. And I hold out my hand, and I will walk to the nearest branch of the tree and take us home. I just do the uh, as we go through the the tree. I just kind of turn back to everybody and just do the terminator. Just. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mugen, uh, as you're leaving, does wish you well, too. Is like, it was good to finally get to know you a little bit, what with time stopped and everything. Uh, and, and then I think he turns to the rest of you and just says, uh, I actually have some business of my own that I need to take care of now. There's, um, uh, there's this mantle thing that I've been kind of toying with the idea of, and, you know, it's trying it on, and... I don't know. Maybe it's my thing after all, but I have to go figure that out. So I'll be in touch. Is oh, it inappropriate uh, to say good luck? No. Good luck then. Thanks. Would it be inappropriate to say it back to you? I don't think so. Well, then good luck to you too. Farewell. Amethyst oh, just says. Sorry. So oh, go ahead. Amethyst just says, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Mugen. Of course. You all couldn't get rid of me if you tried. And then he poofs into smoke. <laughs> Many of us actually tried. <laughs> Seems like he just does it on his own anyway. <laughs> <sighs> I got some work to do. There's going to be a lot of angry people. Unfortunately, I've dealt with a lot of angry people. Excuse me, I gotta go warm up my voice. I think I'm gonna be shouting for a while. <laughs> and he's gonna be basically going and confronting the elven army, mm -hmm. who hopefully have gotten the message that they're not supposed to be an elven army here right now, and kind of forcing them to keep moving up and up and up. It's sort of a, kind of a forced retreat. Are you not, uh, working with Nira on, like, are you coordinating on that, or? No, she needs your space. And he's kind of frightened. Yeah, I was going to suggest they need to be outside the city, but, like, until we straighten everything out, like, they're not going to want to go. Yeah, but <laughs> there's a lot of... The, the whole army. <laughs> well, the big army was all the way down here, which was even further below the city, so... 
Yeah. Because they were about to march on this scene, so. Right. So the. Let's talk about what peace looks like in terms of these immediate no negotiations, because certainly, uh, Nira, you're in a position to throw a lot of weight around from the perspective of uh, your opinion, you know, uh, is, is um, impactful on these discussions. I think you'll find that somewhat like with the, the, the Dark Elves there at the, the scene is like, you're not going to get every single individual person on either side to all agree on anything. Mm -hmm. But at least from the perspective of what the people in charge of each side decide to shake hands on, I think you have significant influence there. So what would you be pushing for in terms of that, that peace process? Well, first of all, the Dark Elves would be able to come and go as they pleased. They are no longer confined to the mountain. Um, one thing that I would want to be sure of is that the Temple of Rushama that is currently in Faru Shah, that they're... Um, I, I want to make a... like a, a tunneled version, like going down into the mountain to allow both people's access mm -hmm. to this place. Um, and uh, the High Elves would uh, definitely have to apologize. Um, <laughs> but understanding that, you know, they didn't have all the information, we got that. So mm -hmm. while the High Elves would have to apologize for this invasion, uh, the, the Dark Elves would have to accept that apology and leave it at that. And consider it done. Um, going forward, it's going to be tougher because, like, people hold on to prejudices, and I'm sure little right. skirmishes will break out. But right, so I it it's it's like I said, you are able to persuade both parties into agreeing on a treaty that looks the way you describe, but you don't have a magical ability to control the thoughts and feelings of every single individual. Right. And so you're right, of course, there are people on both sides who are unhappy with one element or another of the agreement, uh, still have some lingering feelings of one kind or another. Do you have any sort of a codicil for how to uh, deal with the returning people who a hundred years ago tried to help summon a demon lord? <sighs> Which, I'll remind um, you, was because they were tricked into it by the demon lord and corrupted in a way that wasn't entirely their fault. Right. Well, the people within the city would have gotten that message and it, at least were told that part of the story. Mm. Whether or not they choose to incorporate that into their feelings, I can't control. Um, but I, I suppose I would be, it would be kind of a, let them reintegrate if they choose to, um, keep a watchful eye, but don't let them be unless they actually do something if they do not do any like if they're if they're just trying to live let them live um but they're not allowed to uh imprison them or like don't attack them like let them be because it, it, any kind of we need to make attempts to they they were driven to desperation mm -hmm. because of the situation and so we need to show them that it's possible to for things to get better mm -hmm. and so so it would be i would be very insistent on giving them a chance to make other choices and have other options um yeah so i i wouldn't want them imprisoned but yeah, I don't, I don't really, so I, I would be welcome to input because I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar with like dark elf society, so I don't know what that would look like to them. 
And so I would have to discuss that with them, mm -hmm. um, saying this is kind of the goal, taking an input, like how, how do you think we would go about doing that? Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be just like me dictating, this is how it's going to be. It's like, right. this yeah. is what I would like to happen. How do we do this? Well, so a lot of whatever strength there had ever been for that movement is pretty substantially undermined by the other changes that you're implementing here, namely that like the, the whole, the whole justification for any of that was that uh, the spirit of Rishama was a tyrant that wouldn't permit uh, them to leave and wanted to control everything and keep them down. And so if that's not true anymore, the primary motivation for anyone being involved in any of that is undercut substantially. And it, it also means that theoretically the people who don't like it there can just leave now if they want, instead mm -hmm. of being forced into, you know, having some sort of an underground cult. But, uh, yeah, so I think that by and large, what you find is that uh, the people who um, want to reintegrate do, and the people who don't are allowed to leave. And uh, that's pretty much how it goes, because the people who don't want to integrate also don't stick around part of me kind of wants to because we had some of that leftover soap mm -hmm. from the uh the spa the, the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so part of me just wanted to like maybe mark them but you know just just in case just <laughs> to have some warning but mm -hmm. we use that on jinxie so that might defeat the purpose so I don't really have a, yeah, no. So just, we'll let them be and I will cross my fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> so I, I imagine this to be like a several days of long hours of discussions, um, probably intense and then gets a heated and then there's kind of a revelation from time to time. And Alaric would be staying back from being directly involved kind of listening to it looking at the people involved picking in those people the people who seem to be the clear leaders not just the ones who are leaders in title but the ones who definitely seem to be the ones that everyone else is paying attention to mm -hmm. kind of just making a note of them for uh, for later but when there seems to be a break when it seems like the final epiphany has been reached and that level of understanding and a level of 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 cooperation at least seems reasonably there and there's a break he'd come to find uh near can i um can i talk to you so where where are we at this point are we still in the dark elf city because like <laughs> i mean you all tell me yeah, probably, because it wouldn't be the time yet to retreat back up the several hundred meters to the regular city. Uh, do we have to do this now? Because <laughs> we don't have to. Well, have to do this now, as which is the the after a period of weeks well, where a lot has been going on, <laughs> or days or whatever. But I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I, it, like it just seems yeah. like. She would just be really exhausted sure. after all of this is going yeah. on. Sorry, a little I, bit. <laughs> I did not mean to uh, sabotage your choice there. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. You've taken a lot on your shoulders in the last months. Well, and I see you still taking on more. And I know, I know that heart of yours is strong, but you aren't everyone. And you do have to take time for yourself. And you have to take to step back to let them do the work. And I will. But I that's... just wanted to I just wanted to check to see if you're all right. I I am. And uh, thank you for the concern. It's right now it's just a lot of building a strong foundation. I think eventually this will settle down, but there's a lot of work to do right now. I think I know a thing or two about building a strong foundation. 
It's what I used to do, after all. Well, that's... That's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you a little bit. I want to help here and at Farusha and Ushbithra and all the other places that were hurt. But I am going to have to go home. Uh, well. And I'd like to know, know where I that really is. Thought, I really thought this would be harder, but... You're making it easy for me, because I was actually going to tell you that exact thing. That I need you, well, you need to go home. There are people who need you. Uh, I mean, even just thinking about your parents. You were gone for years. They thought you were dead. Uh, they're then, fine with that. We explained all yeah, that. But you, you came back alive and then just left again. Speaking I left of somebody... Note. Speaking as somebody whose family thought they were dead for almost a century, that, that, I mean, I, I have to go home, just not today. I mean, it's, it's just more of, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do. I haven't been away that long. It's only been, well, at this point, a few days since I was last there. I probably should have sent a message, but the message will get out. Well, they got the whole big um, we're fighting the demon lord message. So The world didn't end, so they're probably figuring it went well. <laughs> I'm just well, saying, I mean, I'm not leaving right now. I just I just wanted to say that I, I needed to, I mean, I've got things I've got to get done, but I'm, I'm, I'm here now for this, for you. I mean, this is important. I just don't know long term what it means for me. I don't necessarily think you need to be here right now. There are, are going to be things I may need help with in the future, but so here's the thing, Alaric. Regret is kind of, it's a disease that eats away at love. And there's so I mean, the elves, the elves will be fine. They'll, they'll overcome that. Regret turns love into resentment. So if I send you away right now. It's because I don't want you to have any regrets. If you wait, you, you, you are you telling me to go? I am telling you to go. That's ridiculous. I've got work to do. I know that I acknowledge that, but I'm, I'm not, I've got things to do here. There are, people that need me here. I'd like to think that you're one of them. So here's the thing, Alaric. I will never accept anything less than a heart free of regret. Especially if that's in exchange for my own. What, what, what are you saying? What are you, what are you thinking? I'm saying you need to go home so that you can come back sooner. You can't get rid of me that easily, dwarf. But what do you mean regret? <laughs> what do you, th fine. If you need more space, there's all mountains worth. I won't get in your way. I'll just take me and my regrets back to wherever I'm needed. And he'll turn and storm away. And at that point, I will cast Hold Person on Alaric. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You would target my wisdom. <laughs> if you resist. Mm. 
If I know the source of this spell... I, I don't know who else you think it would be. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, he's caught mid-stride. With probably a grimace on his face, because he can feel it coming. The, the only resistance is to tr turn his face from determination to grimace. So Nera stomps up to him and is, stops in front of him. I wasn't done talking yet. And uh, she will lean down and she will look at him, say, Alaric, you need to go. Do your work quickly. Talk to your parents. Get to know them. Let them know who you've become. Because who you've become is amazing. And they deserve to know that. And you deserve to know them. There are a lot of changes coming to this world. And your people are going to need you, at least for the beginning of that. But for the rest of that, I expect you to be back here as soon as you can. And she will lean down even closer until she is just a breath away from his face. And rather than take the choice of the moment from him, I will drop hold person. And the grimace falls away more replaced by a look of surprise and perhaps shock. It's because I love you too, idiot. <laughs> he tentatively yeah. reaches up. Gently and, grabs the uh, back of her head. <laughs> yep. Keeps interrupting her. <laughs> I will never be done talking. <laughs> <laughs> And I turn back into Ket. No. <laughs> <laughs> this time I can throw you off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting to see if this is actually Ket or not, to be, to be honest. This has happened once. <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. I bring out bladed weapons. Do I have to hit you with lightning? Or are we good? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, she'll just kind of pull him closer and, uh, big romantic kiss. Aww. Momentary hesitation, and then the dwarf kind of leans into it <laughs> on his tippy toes because she's a damn tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have to go ahead and comment for those listening only in audio that there was a whole roller coaster of facial expressions um, <laughs> from the assembled party here uh, as, as that all went down. <laughs> if Amethyst were around, she would have summoned like a whole flock of doves to fly around and be all lovey around y'all. <laughs> so cute. Finally. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, so uh, on that note, where what has Amethyst been getting up to in all this? Has she been sort of preparing her refuge? Absolutely. And um, she will have it, of course, the same way Nira designed, is making changes so that there is an above and below ground area. And um, it'll be... The plans that have developed is just like made her think back on all the vulnerable people and creatures and races that they've come across. And, the, and you know, the dark elves certainly bring that to light for her, having no memory of interacting with them before. And um, I did write something. Let me pull it up real quick. Yeah. Well, so... Um, one yeah. of the things that I'll I'll add just as as flavor because I, I I know you've you've got some stuff written as well but um, something that I don't think I said in game last week was that after everything happened Amethyst does have her memories back. Um, oh, okay, cool. That makes yeah. it a lot easier. To <laughs> okay, well, I did say that to you already, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'd um, forgotten though. That's all right. So that's why I wanted to just mention it. So it's all in context. Is that 
you have begun envisioning even before you realized consciously that you were doing it. But now that you have your memories back and you have more fully understood and comprehended your current dual nature, because you are the tree, but you are also this human being named Amethyst. You are both. They are not separate, except physically. Um, and so you have that understanding and that capability and that awareness. And you have started to recognize that there in uh, the city around the tree, in Emirate Arboris, the city, there is, it's, you could call it a park, but you have begun to develop it with the roots and branches of the tree to the point where that park entrance no longer enters just onto the park that was physically behind that archway. Now it opens into, it could almost be a, a plane of its own. It, it contains elements of the material plane, of course, elements of the Feywild, but also elements of the Beastlands, incorporating all of the different ways that nature can present itself in both ways that are in, in harmony and uh, uh, responsive to the whims of the, the people who might live there, but also in the ways that are wild and uncontrolled and uh, the, the whole circle of life that that entails. And once you pass through that archway, you are no longer in just this small couple of square blocks that the park exists as on the material plane alone, but uh, in a whole new place that can be all sorts of things. And it is many of those things now, and it will be many more things to come. But for now, you have made a place where people who have a need to go somewhere away from expectations of civilized society. Places that they can go to be more in touch with nature, the natural world, and with themselves outside of the uh, conscious judgment of other uh, people, which there are plenty of places where people who don't mind that can go. But sometimes people need a place to go away from that and to just be with nature. And you have, uh, even as your human amethyst body uh, remains wherever else it might be, the work has begun on this place. Do you have a name for it? You kind of just blew my mind because <laughs> like the vastness of what my dream was for this made it impossible for it to be in the city. So thank you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's just so exciting because like in my mind, I'm picturing like I, I described it to Christiana in a second email, kind of like people that have been through shit, whether it's coming out of the tunnels or whatever would have a place to come and just like show up and whatever. And, you know, you, I make these jokes about summoning these emotional support animals, but I'm envisioning like herds of magic snails, you know, and just like things that have been like stripped from, from the world's because of their value are able to recover. And it's not just for people, it's for 
magical or non-magical item. Um, not item. Oh shit, items if they're co <laughs> if they're conscious. Why not? <laughs> they're welcome yeah. too. But plants, so, animals, everything is welcome as a refuge. And so this just is like exciting for me. <laughs> In addition to amethyst, so. So if I, a, a, a simple and straightforward name just occurred to me, which feels mm -hmm. not only um, uh, appropriate in this case, but kind of amethyst style anyway, what if it's simply the nature preserve? I like it. It will have to have a special area within called the Shady AG. But, you know, oh, that sure. goes without saying, I feel. Right. So <laughs> I don't know it should be the name of the preserve. Yeah. <laughs> that can be the special, you know, sponsored by uh, Cat of the Sands Nook. Because after right. all, the entrance of this place, although it could be reached through the tree generally, I think the entrance is right there in, in, uh, in the city. So the, all of that is kind of the work on that has begun. And I think that, uh, you know, Amethyst in her human avatar form can uh, be wherever she likes doing other things while all that's, the construction is underway, so to speak. Um, well, while construction's underway, she would take the trip of Linamara that's been discussed before. Um, she would want to she's as she remembers more about who she is it just strengthened her already immense bond for lena mara so mm -hmm. she would want to go back to where was her it was a the valley was wasn't there a valley that well lena mara originally so where you originally encountered her was in a forest on the way to this temple cave that you were tracking Zoroth to. And uh, right. part of why she became your staff was because when Sitzlebik became a much more powerful spirit and his little trickle of a river became a powerful river, it ended up like flooding the area where her tree was. It was like displaced her. Yeah. And so she was made this into the staff to, to protect her, to, you know, to re preserve her and give her, have her still have a place. Um, and so you could certainly take her back there to, to see that. Um, you could take her anywhere you would like. I, I think, think that that's what I had promised her earlier. So I would do that, but I would also ask her if she would like to have her original home restored or if she would want a space within the nature preserve. I think what she says when you ask her that, because, like, and the goal is so that she doesn't live in the staff, right? She can retreat to it if she chooses, but mm -hmm. she's free to roam wherever, however, yeah. the world's safe for her. Uh, she says, I, I, I think you maybe take her to where, where that was and you, you find a place that's you know not literally in the identical spot because you don't necessarily want to uh interfere with Sitzlebeck uh if you don't have to right um i think he sort of gives you like like i'm not going to bother you you seem busy but <laughs> hi that sort of greeting yeah. when you're in the area um mm -hmm. but uh i think when you let her out from the staff she tells you it's nice to see where i came from again but i have felt at home with you since we first met in ways that i didn't fully understand but now i understand better how kin we are and I have seen things with you that I never would have seen if I had stayed here. And this was a fine place. But I've grown past it. If you would not be traveling on adventures anymore and have no more need to carry me as a staff, 
then I would live in your nature preserve. That, that would be wonderful. I, I don't plan on any other adventures. Occasional roaming from time to time. We'll go see something new. It would be my great pleasure and privilege to act as your staff whenever you have need of me. But we'll put down some roots. It does feel pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> So that would, you know, that would, that was what she wanted for Lena Mara. Um, mm -hmm. She would have at some, at some point, she would drop in on Andrew with her pocket full of diamonds. <laughs> um, sure she's would okay. anyone else be uh, accompanying you for that trip? Totally. Anybody else is welcome. My cat and Cadence didn't ever even meet her. Right. Like, Y'all want to meet her? <laughs> yeah. Been hearing her for so long. <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy to go along with, with. You know all of these trips because the whole nature thingy and oh and archie is absolutely welcome on all of them yeah i actually have something for archie oh, well i'm sure we do like we're covering a period of what i'm yeah. sure is several weeks yeah this know, is like... long this is yeah, just me so we we can have we have a little montage of different things here um but uh yeah so who who would like to go on this particular trip to see andry uh, Nira's got her hands kind of full. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah I totally go. Ideally, would be visiting, checking in on her, and making sure that she's okay with mm -hmm. every, you know, whatever the world looks like now, and um, offering her space at the preserve too, because it's rapidly kind of turning into like with all this space. Yeah, it's kind of like turning into like a place where folks will be living too like i'm going to be living there obviously and i'll off i've already offered space to you know other people as dwellings and mm -hmm. making a space by the way for all the heroes of legend um but like offering space to andrea as well because she was a part of the story sure uh so when you catch up with her you find her in villanocta and you find her with her husband and daughter who she finally persuaded to move to the big city Yay. with her um and but they're safe and yeah they're safe and uh and she is delighted to see you and just gushes about how amazing you all were in that incredible message she saw and and she says you know I, I i won't lie that there was a time where i felt like maybe you'd all just forgotten about me but you know it when when i left it was because i knew all of you were going to be out there doing incredible important things and that that just wasn't my path and looks like I was right. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I am grateful to have been a part of that story. Um, especially because, uh, I don't know, it just, uh, gave everyone a little perspective and she, uh, kind of nods over to her husband, which if you recall was the slightly weedy halfling mayor of the one <laughs> town that you stopped through for a little while that's right yeah mm -hmm. um and uh and he kind of you know waves a little bit and and she just says i uh yeah you know so not all of it was fun but mm. there's no question that it was important and uh happy ending at least for me Hmm. Thanks well, for checking have... in on me. Oh yeah. Oh, in here. Have fun I with it. to make it a little happier. <laughs> yeah. So she looks in and is just. <gasps> we don't want you to worry about anything. Well, right now I'm worried. I don't have any safe place to put this. <laughs> 
So yeah, I, I don't know what to do about that. Maybe we can give her a magic bag. Or something, I, you know what? I think, I think we can, can handle figure it. it out. I, we'll I think it'll it be fine. That's <laughs> the kind of problem that you're happy to solve, right? Just, just stay casual. <laughs> just you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. Like if it turns out that I need to uh, buy somewhere that will be safer to put it, I know what you to can do. Afford it. Yeah. <laughs> And she, she gives both of you a hug and uh, asks to pass on her, her love to, uh, you know, to Nira and uh, Mugen and Alaric. Absolutely. And then I tell her daughter, hey, come anytime and see the magic snails. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that my dragon friend will come visit too. I'd love to introduce you. <laughs> oh, can we? Can we, mom? Yeah. So there's, <laughs> you get the feeling that a, a future visit will be in the offing. Nice. Right. So, Anybody else, Archie, want to visit while we're in Villanocta? Hmm. Wouldn't mind a soup and a smoke with the uh, Archdruid and Barry, but you oh, know, yeah, I'll come go. up later. Oh, for real. <laughs> you can certainly check in with them. Also, just kind of find out how it's going with, uh, you know, young Melikanth and Talia and everyone yeah. returning. We could report back to Nera and. I'm sure that she would be interested, although she's quite busy right now. I, I don't really have anything to say to any of them. I just thought it'd be a no, yeah. little bullet point. <laughs> so I think you find if you just inquire is that uh, um, uh, given that the elder Melikanth has, um, you know, long since left her post as the magic advisor uh, of Villanocta, they hadn't actually replaced her yet. And so the young Melikanth finds that uh, perhaps it's a position that could suit her. <laughs> um, there is uh, some question about how does the line of succession work when someone you thought was dead turns out to not be dead, but they're two generations back and it's ultimately determined and she reluctantly accepts that the treaty with the Tashmian Empire specifically named her grandson as the Baron as being in charge, and it's not technically the same line of succession that it was before. And so there is some discussion about whether she is going to, uh, you know, like return to uh, Pashan and kind of try to, like, she she's feeling some mixed loyalty right now because she feels like, the big peace agreement that she got married for and that whole thing was really important to her. And it seems like it kind of got messed up in her absence. And so she's, you get the feeling that she's going to be working on that and, uh, you know, how that eventually turns out hard to say that's a further in the future question. Right. Um, Rake does eventually, um, uh, you know, leave there and he's planning to travel to, uh, to Ushbithra to see his daughter and grandson and daughter-in-law, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, and, uh, Kethar, the, the monk member of the party that you really never knew or interacted with in any way disappeared like a puff of smoke and nobody knows where she is and nobody cares because <laughs> nobody knows her. No, I'm kidding. Um, Red but dirt. I'm not really kidding. That is what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, the but they're kind of doing all right though. But, uh, you know, you, you speak with the younger Melikanth and she does confirm that's like, haven't heard from my other self. I don't know what she's up to. But we're finding that the world is as stable as it ever would be. Yeah, I mean, like everyone kind of got a shock to the system and everyone's appetite for violence and war is a little bit, you know, sated wanted. for the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so there is an element of everyone realizes, oh, gosh, the, there was a lot of really bad stuff that almost went down in the whole world. And um, I think you increasingly discover, too, that it's not as... So part of the way your whole message was presented to everyone, nobody really questions that it was real, exactly, but that there has... There, people ha choose to interpret it differently. 
You know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, there. So there are people who have very different opinions about what that all meant and what it should mean moving forward. Everyone still ultimately has their own interests uh, for things. But to be sure, at least for the near future, there's a lot of, well, gosh, you know, our petty squabbling over who owns that watchtower sure doesn't seem as important uh, given everything that just happened. So, you know, cool. things are calmer. Good for yeah. the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then certainly, you know, that's, that's all just material, prime material plane stuff right now. You know, you're not seeing <laughs> yet a lot of interplanar travel, even though you know that like the whole, your whole intent is that like trees kind of back open for business, so to speak. And probably over time, that's going to start meaning more travel between different planes for for all that implies. Yeah. But uh yeah, so and then I yeah, I think you check in with uh with Arch Druid Evergreen and, and Barry and uh you know get a a uh an approving nod from one and a big hug from the other. Yay. <laughs> and uh I'm sure Barry hugs Archie too. He's such oh, a yeah. hugger. <laughs> yeah. Oh absolutely. And in fact they are greatly thrilled and impressed with your your new vow and mm. uh you know th there's a little bit of like you know i wouldn't have said anything before because you know people like make the choices they make but have to say like the vengeance thing like i don't know i mean but this new one like looks great on you i feel like Aww. it's where you really ought to have been all along uh but you know everyone has their journey to get where they're going so <laughs> you know wouldn't begrudge you any of that but uh glad you got where you're going <laughs> are you saying something you're muted i think no sorry no <laughs> i wasn't sure if you were trying to no, say no, yeah <laughs> uh all right so um uh so starla you said you had something for otter key i did um so <laughs> i guess probably before they left on this trip nero would have approached archie mm -hmm. um like um so I, I don't, I don't know if you have any plans going forward, but I wanted to run something by you, see how you felt about it. Sure. I, I don't know what, I, I, I know that you don't really have anything in the way of family right now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to consider Maybe staying on at Favrusha, we could use you here. Um, I want to start a, a school where people can come and learn. And mm. I think you would be a great draw for that. You could, you're excellent at combat and strategy, just that alone. But being able to train a new generation of paladins, like <laughs> that just... I, I'm, it kind of gives me goosebumps. Um, but not only that, um, we have a lot of master blacksmiths in Farusha, and you have different techniques than they do. And it might be interesting for you to trade information with them. Um, also, uh, I, I don't know, I know you kind of took up this hobby of making musical instruments. Mm. And yeah. there is a master luthier in town that Ooh. creates these violins that their their music could rival anything in a fey court and i thought you might be interested in learning some trade secrets from him but it would give you a lot to do and a place to <clears throat> set down roots in between your missions to defeat evil and preserve life if you're interested wow um interesting yeah i uh yeah I, I i intended to to go back to the southern barrier mountains and visit where i'd grown up and you know 
see the smithy there and uh, you know still have other you know don't have family per se but plenty of friends and see make sure they're okay and getting along and I mean I really just intended to just kind of you know seek out any other evil and try to brighten people's lives and music seems seems to make people happy and seems to 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 spread the light so um i i have a lot to learn so i think that would be a great start um a great it wouldn't have to be permanent if you didn't want it to be but i wanted to extend the invitation to you in case you might be interested uh, step one is absolutely learning and to be able to share my knowledge and learn as well would definitely be wonderful um of course you know i'm devoted to life and light not the spirit of rashama so, you know, oh no 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 it's not I, i'm that it doesn't it doesn't mean but that there's a lot of overlap <laughs> certainly complimentary i'm thinking a, from now on think of it as a uh traveling professorship <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you don't necessarily have to be part of the clergy <laughs> that that sort of defeats the purpose of bringing in new points of view and other information from outside of this one small mm -hmm. bubble of existence in all of everything yeah. And we would love to have you. And I think it would be a huge step forward, uh, especially because they all know what you've done. It would it would greatly improve their willingness to accept outsiders. I think it's mm. an important first step. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Let's do it. <laughs> Start a syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Cat and Cadence, having made your way home, this time to stay for a while, this time returning to a city that is not frozen in amber, not frozen in time, but active and alive and back where it belongs. It's probably different than all of these sort of false homecomings that you've had. What do you get up to? Um, as we come down from the tree, I just sort of turn to Kat and I'm like, I, um, I took Mira's advice before we left, and I, I did talk to my mother. Um, I'm glad that I did. But now it's time for us to go and see your family. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm, I'm glad you talked to your mother. Was she, was she pissed? No, she she was really happy to see me. She thought sometimes that we were never coming back, but she was really glad that I was with you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. She, I don't know, she kind of felt better knowing that we were together. Oh. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe she'll feel better after this. And, uh... Cat just kind of gets down on one knee and pulls out a ring. And is like, uh, so you want to, like, hang out for a while? <laughs> like, yeah. maybe our whole lives kind of thing, you know? Do you want to get married, man? That's what I'm saying, you know. I do. want to get married. Okay. All right, man. Yeah, okay. 
Um, I'm going to make my little hooray in canon as Arius suddenly peeks his head up out of the uh, <laughs> pavement. <laughs> Yay! Arius! Yeah. You came back! I told you we would come back. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt such a lovely moment. I just couldn't help myself. Damn it, man! <laughs> We're back, back underneath we're... the road. Like he's just phasing out of the pavement now. We're here so, to stay. We'll come and find you. But right now we need to see our family. Yeah. So like we 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 kind of flash forward a little bit and mm -hmm. we tell our families and stuff. And we have a, a small little wedding with the heroes of legend there. Um, Alaric gives me away. <laughs> 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 You know, it's just nice and quiet. <laughs> I tell you what wouldn't be quiet, the bachelorette party that Nira would throw for Cadence. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All that drinking that we didn't get to do all that whole time because we're yeah. so busy. Making up for it now. <laughs> I'm like then, standing on a rooftop. <laughs> and then I don't know, do you just want, do you want to just go over the epilogue there, Ket, or Cadence? I don't know, Ket, do you? <laughs> I don't know, Cadence, Ket, Cadence. Um, Does that make you Cadence of the Sands now? I don't know how that even works, man. I guess we'll have to figure <laughs> that out. I guess you guys get to decide how it works, because it works however you want it to work. Okay, well, okay. let's figure that out after. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't you're, know. You're, you're now Ket and Cadence of the Mud. Yeah, there we go. There you go. There we go. <laughs> yes, that's castle. perfect. Yes, yes that's yes. exactly okay. That's I do perfect. like Sandcastle better like than that. Mud. <laughs> okay. Captain Cadence of the Sandcastle. There you go. Um, of the beach. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people ask us to go with them on adventures. Hmm, sure. And we always say no. Yeah, you know, we spent like so long away from home that really, like, not. I don't really care much for travel anymore, and I mean, I'm happy staying where I am with with Cadence. So we just become strange homebodies with a a quaint little house mm -hmm. outside of the the city proper. You certainly have, uh, you know, the tree looming in the distance to remind you of, of Amethyst. I think probably working with, um, you know, any any connection you would still uh, ma maintain with the temple. Uh, are you are you taking your responsibilities there uh, seriously, or kind of giving those over to someone else? Um, actually, she becomes a she she works with Shadow of a Star and mm -hmm. becomes a teacher. And spends a lot of time for a while with the children, mostly children, mm -hmm. teaching them about the tree and the importance of making friends everywhere you go and leaving every place that you go better than when you found it. So that's how she spends her time for a while. Very nice. Uh, certainly, in uh, in those close ties with the tree, you would be be aware of the uh, the growth and development of the nature preserve there in uh, in what used to be just sort of a normal normal park is is now not an is an abnormal park <laughs> um, is its own sort of miniature refuge. Um, only miniature from the outside. What is what do you what does Cadence think about that? She actually loves it. She feels I okay. think that she would have bonded with Amethyst quite a bit, even afterwards, because of Amethyst's connection to the tree. She would always be like, at least coming to visit her and we're like spend time with the pigs and puppies and <clears throat> all that stuff and. At one point, she actually like convinces Cat, like we got to go, man. We can't. I, I, I think about him every day, and she actually finally convinces him to leave a little while to go and check up on Robert and see if Robert would like to come back and live with them, 
even though he's sort of like a pig of legend and he's all everybody thinks he's amazing mm -hmm. well so you you arrive knowing that he has received the royal treatment for some time now you know he has been given the best food uh the a, a lovely cushion to sleep upon admiration of his many fans but as soon as he sees you cadence he just hops right up and and trots over to nuzzle you he's so big now that i can't pick him up because i'm very super big. weak man he's a very big boy <laughs> Um, but you get the impression that, uh, he, he would be happy to go wherever you want to go and, uh, he would like to go with you. Um, but, uh, like, so I think there's a moment though, where like the tavern owner who's kind of made his whole pub themed around the fact that he had the pig of legend, like living there in a the little spot that's like, <laughs> like a little thrown area for the pig. That's like, he's, he's themed his whole bar on it. <laughs> is a little bit dismayed at the thought that he might be leaving, although he certainly doesn't feel like he has much ground to stand on to tell you you can't take him. Yeah. But he's bummed. He's very sad. He likes Robert, too. I leave him. I, I flip him a couple platinum pieces to make up for it. There's definitely a little bit of that complicated reaction of, like, I'm I'm still not happy he's leaving, but that yeah. does make it a lot better. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, if if it ever comes down to it, and like we get a, a female pig, and there's ever little piglets, like you get first dibs, okay, man. Thank you for taking care of my my pig <laughs> and treating him like royalty. Of course. Uh, can I? Can what? Can the two of you like? autograph the wall or something yeah we um, autograph the wall and then we put robert's hoof prints yeah like yeah pig prints on the wall yeah very nice yeah, yeah. he's he's satisfied now All right. <laughs> and then i think when we go when we're back home and stuff like cat would like to just he doesn't want to open up like a, a like a bard at college or a bard school or anything like that but he just kind of wants to be a, a private tutor yeah to, to people to, who want who are interested in the in the bardic arts so mm -hmm. he's gonna do that and he's gonna also gonna be kind of like as he as he gets older in years he's gonna kind of be like c3po telling stories to the ewoks <laughs> he's just gonna you know just have colorful retellings of our adventures and you know telling stories to children and, and adults and you know as as he gets older and stuff like that and just you know, settling yeah. down. Yeah. Of course, like their own children don't take anything they say seriously because yep. they have two children. <laughs> yeah, we do have two. And they're children. all like, "Oh, yep. whatever." You were legendary. I get it, man. That's all I covered. <laughs> yeah, they're like they're, he, it's like Naruto's kid, you know. Yeah. Like, like, Naruto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we, uh, but our kids' names. Uh, I'll say the boy's name. The boy, the boy who is named uh, Poem of Summer. We call him Poe for short. Yep. And we yeah. have a daughter who is named um, Gemstone Glittering in the Sand. Yes. She's truly outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly outrageous. Um, <laughs> very nice. That is our story. Oh. So, uh, Otterkey, do you, do you make that trip? Back to the Barrier Mountains? Uh, yeah, he definitely would. Um, so you know, of course, now that, uh, I mean, 100, and, 100 years passed since you were last there. But so you, you know that uh, a lot of the humans you would have known there are yeah. not likely to still be around. But you're... Uh, you're Dwarven blacksmith uh, mentor is, uh, he's still kicking around. He has uh, his, <laughs> he has his uh, current apprentices mostly running the shop um, now, but you know, he uh, still putters through to uh, browbeat them for not doing something right from time to time. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, when uh, when you come back through, I I think he's just amazed to see you and just, just you know you know, to think that this little tiefling boy he took in, um, you know, look what you amounted to. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and no, uh, um, no, I don't really have anything specific I'd want to do there other than, you know, thank him for, for being, uh, for raising him to be the person he became mm -hmm. in the absence of his parents and, I think what he'll he'll say is I I did worry sometimes because you were so angry and how could I have ever told you not to be after what you went through but I I I worried that that anger would become a poison but instead it became a passion and a passion that led you to do incredible things. And I have to just look at you now and see this man who's grown to do such heroic things and who is one of the most, if I may say, happiest and most confident looking men I have ever encountered. <laughs> and just think, you know, I'm just happy to have had my own small part in that. <clears throat> big, big, big part. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So, uh, Alaric, do you do you go home to see family? So it's it's yeah. He leaves almost immediately, um, and probably anyone who dis saw him. For the next few years, would almost describe him as possessed. Um, when he arrives home, he's already kind of walking in, and the guards have recognized him at least. Mm -hmm. But they they seem to stand back because he doesn't seem to slow his stride at all, as he's purposely walking directly to to uh, to his father's study, where he assumes he is that time of the day, and doesn't announce himself doesn't even kind of in some ways acknowledge them just starts just walks in lays paper down on the desk and says, i have a lot of plans and it takes him a little while to realize how shocked they are to see him because he forgot to send a message he forgot to notify anybody he didn't say anything he literally had spent the i don't forget how long it was week i think on the on the road every day kind of thinking about things scratching things on paper or that night kind of writing them out and it takes him a while to catch up to the fact that they're kind of crying at the head turn that he's given them over the last, for them, couple of weeks. For him, it's been a month since he's been here, and he hadn't really thought about the way he left everything uh, and kind of uh, still a little bit in shock about that. But eventually settles down into the plans, to which his father is mostly dubious. His mother's quite incredulous. And then he wins them both over through basically waving the axe around in many ways, <laughs> because not, not in, in a threatening way, but because it is such a symbol that they actually start to believe he might actually be able to pull this off. The first few things are construction projects and it takes a while. And all of the others at some point notice that there are dwarves that have appeared somewhere near them who seem to be following them a little bit just sort of making notes on paper nobody really knows why when confronted they just say oh well we've heard so much about your story and we're just here to see if it's true they've got some cover story they're well they're given a well oiled cover story but it does get a little suspicious well i i'll just go ahead and also say all of you you guys are literally the most famous seven people in the universe so you get attention wherever you go. Um, <laughs> over the, the, the months that pass, uh, one of the things that Nirakina will notice is Alaric just appears in the city from time to time. Doesn't announce himself and doesn't seem to come from anywhere. He just appears in the city from time to time. And he's got a bunch of papers. And at one point, 
he seems to be, again, kind of driven more than Nirakina would have ever seen him. Uh, and he doesn't explain, but he does ask, I've got an idea. I want to build a pillar right there. Would that be all right? Are you the person to ask? Uh, and I want to make it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think she would be very confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think knowing who she knew, she would probably be able to direct him to the person in charge of like community planning <laughs> and stuff like that. So, because, you know, high elves and they have an order to things. And she kind of rolls her eyes like, oh, God, I have to do this again. <laughs> Always in council meetings. So like motions them and they points him to the right person <laughs> and he probably takes off right away and then kind of over his shoulder oh um really good to see you we'll have to catch up soon i'm sorry this is going to take a few minutes and like a few hours of explaining his plans comes out with a satisfied look on his face um the sword the hammer or sorry the, the axe can't remember what it is now the axe is out when he comes out of the meeting you're kind of hoping he didn't have to use it but for whatever reason, he drew that that axe out, uh, and then kind of immediately kind of tosses it back into the the, the nether realm where it sits most of the time, uh, and then spends if if Nirakina has the time, spends time with her, and asks her all kinds of things about Farusha, and getting to know the city, like even asking questions like. Do you know who built that? How old is that part? Is this is this a part that's original or was that afterwards? Does that part need well, to be replaced? So one of the things that Nira would have done um, in him leaving, um, she would have actually gone to the Barrier Mountains at one point and talked to Father Igni about setting up a very small shrine to Rushama, mostly for Alaric's use, but also so that she could um, set up Ward of Recall so that she could just come and go and pop in. The, as the funny was. thing is, Father Igni would have said, Alaric came with plans for that about a week ago. <laughs> well, so what I was actually going to jump in and say is that um, he is very happy to have both of your support in making that happen because, frankly, there's been a lot of expressed interest. <laughs> After everybody in the universe got this whole mission, there are people who are like, I don't know. It seems like Rashawn was pretty great. Maybe we should uh, get in on that, right? That's exactly well, how this word of it. word of recall would be like a kind of like a one way just for like me. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I'm me, I'm just so. I, what I mean is <clears throat> there are yeah. people in the Barrier Mountains interested in having a shrine to Rashawn. Right. So, um, I yeah, I could definitely like help advise on that so that. <laughs> yeah, the word of recall travel would probably be helpful, and she would be very surprised. Um, but yeah, she would. She would do that. Father Igni would have also said that Alaric was asking a lot more questions about spirits recently, um, and he was kind of <laughs> yes, surprised sorry. at that because because Alaric had expressed no interest in the spirits when growing up. Uh, Igni had always complained about the fact that he barely seemed to be there when he was talking about them. And sometimes he'd slept, he'd slipped out already. So after about, about a year, I say, um, after the big incident, the first of these things is, is finished. And he invites all of the legends to come to the, the grand opening. And it is revealed in the courthouse or the courtyard, I should say, of the Copperbeard estate, this massive structure, which is, is covered over. And first of all, depending on how they arrived, if they had teleported in, there would have been probably no, no effect. But if they came to the front gates, they would have been ushered through to that area and asked uh, a couple of questions they would have been asked to state their full full identity and they would have been asked to uh swear 
that they are here for no harm. Would have been kind of weird, but it wouldn't have something. And you kind of get the impression that when the guards are ushering you this in, they're being very courteous about it. They're being very exacting. Some of them would even have been holding scripts to make sure they get all the words right. They've been practicing, but aren't quite used to this yet. And then the reveal comes as he greets all of the people assembled in the courtyard. Uh, not a big crowd, uh, although some of them would have been lookers on. He, he hadn't announced it to anybody else, like literally had told nobody else that this was going to be the revealing day, but the word had gotten out as the, the artisans who've been working on this for a year have been kind of saying, well, like, yeah, they're working on this great big project. They can't really talk about it, but after a couple of beer, they can kind of talk about it. Uh, it was kind of weird, but also kind of neat. And for six months, he's had dwarven artisans following each of the legends to get their likenesses and to get them as perfect as they can. And they've been sketching and sculpting and doing all kinds of pre, uh, pre-assembled things to get them just right. And the reveal comes, they pull back the, uh, the large uh, shrouds that are over it to see the assembled legends stand in there. In addition to the Mugen statue, which was there before, now all of the others have been built and they are exquisite. They are some of the, he's, he's pushed and prodded to get some of the best dwarven artisans, not just from the Copperbeard family, but the secondary mission of this whole thing was also to draw in and talk with and make liaison with the other dwarven clans and to use this as one of the opening measures Hello. in a longer term thing. In each of them, they're, they're there, they're in their, their glory, they are massive. Because the Mugen statue alone was, I think, 12 feet. So imagine all the rest of them scaled up to match that one as perfectly as can be. Um, there may be a slightly glowing effect on the Nirakina Ethu statue. There may have been a little bit more attention or a little bit more paid to that. Um, but in front, kind of standing with them, with the axe in one hand is a lark, and in the other hand, he's holding a large stone lantern. In the center of the lantern, you come to realize very quickly, because they're kind of distinct, the special stones that you picked up from the spa lands are inside the lantern. And he quickly explains, it's not perfect, and I didn't want to frighten everybody. But I wanted this to be a beacon. I wanted this to be a, a, a memory, a record, and also to be a, a warning that if any, if that creature ever makes her presence known here, that will light up and everyone knows what that means. It's not much, but it makes my heart be at ease just a little bit. And I didn't want to do this in just some, some, piece of stone. I wanted it to be something that was meaningful so that when if she made it here and saw this and saw that glow, she knows that we stand larger than her. Physically in the case of the statue, but in every other way as well. I wanted her to be in awe and recognize that we we let her exist. But we know her threat cannot come true. And, I, and I, I wanted a permanent record of, of, of all of you. I lost my memory of all of this once. But if I see this, I'll remember you all. There will be no way in hell that I could forget this now. Now, I know we are all going to go our separate ways for the most part. I won't see you all nearly as much as I would like. Even near Akina, I've got a lot of work to do. But I want you to know that you're always with me. If I'm here working, I will see this. I've had smaller versions of this that I can wrap into cloth and carry with me. No matter where I am. I tried my own crude versions of them back in the Feywilds, and it worked, but it wasn't enough. These will be enough. You're all larger than life to me. And I wanted to honor that. Now, 
Who wants a beer? Or 17? Me. <laughs> Draw that scene to a close. So, uh, uh, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, so, Mugen has been uh, in and out from time to time. Uh, he has been uh, establishing a monastery. And he has been doing it up on the, 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 the northern coast. And a little place where there really wasn't anything before. But, uh, you know, it's around Leviathan Bay. And uh, uh, he has uh, set up a little, you know, coastal shrine and monastery that's uh, devoted to Huli Jing and monks to uh, learn her ways. But the thing is, uh, Huli Jing never decided, to, she decided never to come back from her sabbatical vacation, whatever that was. And uh, so there is a another monk uh, by the name of Tompton who's going around, seems to have uh, taken on those duties. But uh, in one of his uh, visits with all of you, uh, Mugen says, I let him do it. It's the decoy. It kind of is on the whole thing, but it's really me. And uh, so indeed he has chosen to take on the, the mantle of uh, godhood permanently. And so, but in the meantime, he still hangs out at the monastery. He's establishing it all there. Um, he invites you all to visit and you discover that all of the other monks there are now also fox monkeys. And he says, it's only while they're in training. Eventually they'll learn how to turn themselves back if they want to, but it just feels like it, I found it to be a very useful form in terms of helping me to understand my place in the world. So I figure if I had to do it, everybody has to do it. Um, he also uh, is pleased to announce that it's feeding time and he leads you all out to uh, uh, where the monastery has this like on, on stilts, almost a dock-like uh, abutment up to the coast. And you see them load a cake into what can only be described as some sort of a catapult. And as they pull it, the cake flies above the water. And then a truly gigantic creature leaps out of the water and snags the cake out of the air and then goes back under the water. And uh, if, if you were to ask about that uh, creature, he says, oh, that's Bubba. I, I have to ask, is that the, the same creature from the, the one shot we did? <laughs> that would be great. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, so Mugen's doing all right. You know, he's got a, he, he seems committed to this enlightenment thing. It's working for him. You know, got the monastery. He's got people actually coming to study at a monastery that he's running. You know, you, you think about the, this little uh, uh, con artist who didn't know how to work with anybody else and was always just kind of on the run, has uh, put down roots of his own. He's got friends that he visits with regularly and people that he's gathered to himself to teach. He's doing all right. So... Does anyone have uh, any other business they would like to cover? Um, well, Nira would have made sure that her debt with Solomonia had been cleared. Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? How do you? On her. How do you go about doing that? Um. Well, the, her uh, holy symbol had been transformed at one point. Yes. Uh, you do find that it is reverted to the the one you are familiar with when uh, you start time again. When you think to check okay. it, it's it's no it's no longer got the sun behind it. So she probably also would have sent Solomonia a message, mm -hmm. just something quick, just like, "Are we good?" <laughs> uh the message you get back is, darling, we are fantastic. 
Yeah, I'm leaving that one alone because I got too much to do already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would definitely, um, over the, the course of that, you know, especially that first year, would have done a lot of work like restoring the city and um, anybody who fell during either the invasion or the... Um, incident of the misplaced mistress um because nira could just like divine intervention them like once a week <laughs> <laughs> she she wouldn't like do that just like willy-nilly it would have to be like a you know something yeah. important yeah i think but, you um... do occasionally find that uh because the spells generally do require a willing soul that you do find that some of the souls have found their rest or their place in one of the other outer planes somewhere and uh, don't necessarily all want to come back, but uh, many do and are grateful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would definitely be something that she did. And um, then, yeah, working on getting that, I get uh, college is the only way I could describe it, although I, I think it would probably be phrased differently <laughs> um <clears throat> to uh open up the city and uh like she would send out scouts to find experts in just various fields to come and lecture not necessarily permanently like they could stay if they chose to but um to speak you know to um, teach anyone who had gathered to listen and uh hopefully like starting with archie and um I think at first it would be a lot of the younger generation who are a little more open to change would be the ones gathering at these, you know, lectures and teachings. But eventually some of the, the older people would come, you know, just to see what this was about because they're still a little suspicious that the, like mm -hmm. this would have taken a lot of work to convince them to do this in the first place. Mm -hmm. But e eventually, you know, she gets her way <laughs> because it's near <laughs> not gonna stop mm -hmm. <laughs> and um yeah so she would be working on that and a lot of um probably a lot of settling arguments um and occasionally the uh outspoken teenager would be brought to her and <laughs> or would come to her and be like my parents just don't understand and they think mm -hmm. i'm just causing rebellion you know just to act out and but you did all this stuff and da, da, da. and she's like look <laughs> let me tell you about rebellion <laughs> it's hmm. not what you think it is <laughs> and so she she would be dealing with a lot of that as well um as well as occasionally popping into the barrier mountains and uh kind of seeing this uh small shrine at first to rishama kind of grow a little bit you know with and every time she comes to visit and and to talk to people and like it just sort of grows a little bit every time and there's there's a few more people here and there um eventually you know she uh aside from alaric she would you know grant a handful of people you know an introduction into being clerics and sort of uh, ordain them i suppose um so they were there would be a small mm -hmm. contingent there as well who would make pilgrimages to rushama like every once every decade something like that yeah. <laughs> I like how Alaric is the only one she doesn't give the speech about how to be a cleric to. <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing, but he's trying really hard. Well, you know, you, you've got your own very intuitive way that seems to be working for you. So, you know. And she's explained it. It's like it's about intent. And you, Alaric is very intent right now. <laughs> So I do have one more thing along those lines. It seems appropriate if I can jump in. Um, and that is the what he's building at Farusha. And it, it doesn't look like much, really. He's using local stone. He's uh, been, you can see him every once in a while. He's brought in, and you don't know how they got there. Again, they just sort of appear, and he's brought a contingent of like six expert masons, masons, but he's not letting them do any of the work. He asks them all kinds of questions but he insists on doing the work himself, stone by stone, brick by brick, all the mortar himself, building this, this pillar, which 
is probably leads to a lot of weird stories because there's this dwarf dressed in amazing regalia who's standing on the side of a pillar assembling it because he still has the boots mm. and literally kind of spider climbing up this up the side of this pillar as he builds it over a period of time and the pillar is uh, about uh, five feet wide made of mason stone uh, most of the stone is not worked it's raw stone that's carved into shape rather than pressed stone or or pressed brick or anything like that but it's it's built to be strong uh, it extends from the floor in in one of the larger spaces there all the way to the ceiling uh, and is actually very tightly up against the ceiling and then once it's completed a different group of people is brought in and you can tell and people can tell that these dwarves are not from the same clan uh, and there's a lot more arguing when they come in. Again, though, he refuses to let them do any of the work themselves. Instead, he takes the, the hammer and the chisel and begins to carve away at the surface of this stone. Um, he also, you also notice that there are locals that he has brought into this. He hasn't told Nirakina what he's doing. And in fact, he's told everybody he's working with not to tell Nirakina what he's doing. <laughs> Um, just because she would probably stop him if she did. That's what his reasoning is, not what he would tell them to do. <laughs> That's a great way to get get off on a new relationship is by it's true, true. secrets. But, and uh, we well, I'm not going to tell her because she'd stop me. <laughs> <laughs> but it becomes pretty apparent when you start to see what he's carving in. He's carving in Dwarven first, which I don't know if Nira Keener understands, but... Um, she would notice that there's some sort of dwarf in there. So she would be able to read it, but then followed with it, kind of going a little bit at a time, like a sentence at a time, curling around the outside of the pillar, all the way to the top, is the story of Greshla and Rushama, the true story from Rushama, from piecing the others together to understand the foundation which was built, to understand the interrelationship that was there, even including kind of the, the misunderstanding and how that, that, that caused the world to fall. And when he's finally done, and he's kind of stepping back, and I, I'm, I'm going to place Nirakina in the scene, kind of, she would have been seeing that he's really near the top. It's covered in runes at this point. And he kind of finally steps back and kind of, you know, brushes his hands off. All right. I think it's finally done. I mean, for now, I've got some other plans, but I was thinking about calling it the, the Pillar of Sanctuary or, 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 or Greshla and Rishama. I haven't really settled on a name yet. I was never very good at these kinds of names. I can remember other people's names. But uh, from what they told me, from what I learned, it, it should last at least a thousand years. And I, and I think it's going to tell the story. I really hope it works. And he walks quickly over to the side of the pillar, materializes the axe, and mid-swing, looks over his shoulder, I'll see you in three days if this works, and smacks the side of the pillar. There's a spark, and he vanishes in a puff of smoke. <laughs> okay. Everyone, give me just one second. I've got a very ornery <laughs> little dog that needs to be tended to for just a moment. Let me... Get... Tinter hooks. Nira, that's no man. <laughs> it's an odd place to pause. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, so I, <laughs> well, it's it's pretty apt because yeah. Nira would just be going, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> And then someone would run up to her with some new crisis, I guess. Right. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Turning into her mother. <laughs> so, three days later, let me see. How would he time that? I think he would be trying, he would, he would have been trying to figure out where Nia Kina might actually be at that period of time. But he hasn't really followed her daily schedule recently, so he's probably wrong. But uh, let's say that he appears in that same conference room we first appeared in when we came here, the one where we first found the keys. 
mid-conference. There's actually a full-blown discussion going on about something. He doesn't know what it is. A bunch of people are there, and then suddenly, in there. <laughs> sure, and suddenly, bang, there's an explosion in the middle of the room, a small amount of puff of dust, and he's standing there uh, on the table, looking triumphant, hooting and hollering. It worked. I knew it would work. It worked. And he's looking around the room. Sorry. Um, I think I'm in the wrong room. And then kind of quickly scurries out of the room. And then starts running around the city yelling for Nirakina and trying to find out where she is. I think by this time, certainly people know who you are anyway, but you've now become that dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> like, not in like a mean way, but just a like, whoop, there he goes again. All right. Yep. Now, the, the fact that he bypasses <laughs> crowds of people on the street by walking up the wall and around over the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, which is natural. So it's sort of second nature to him at this point. Yeah. The, the, th the image that honestly comes to mind for me is that when I went to uh, college at the University of Colorado, there was some guy, and I don't actually know who he was, but he would just stroll through campus with his headphones on, singing at the top of his lungs. And it was just <laughs> delightful every time you encountered him. <laughs> In any case, go, go nice. ahead. So, so we are probably be in the temple. <laughs> okay. So you hear this crazy shouting of, uh, of Alaric running through, probably passing by the temple thinking, oh, no, she's probably over there, and then turning around, no, wait, she's probably back there as he kind of comes running back. And uh, you see his head pop in, uh, in from the top of the doorway as he looks down from the ceiling. Oh, you're here. Good. And kind of walk around the corner. And and he pulls you out to point at the at the uh, pulls you out by both hands to point eagerly at the at the uh, the pillar. It worked. It worked. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? I have no idea what any of this means. Well, I wasn't sure if I knew what it meant either, but it worked. The axe. This axe. This axe is the, the entire embodiment of the Dwarven people. It has been a part of our legends, a part of our being for as, as long as we've existed. It's, 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 it's not legendary. It's, it's, it's central. And I've had the privilege of carrying it for, for so long. And for a while yet, I will carry it. But there's been a, a, a feature of it that I have been, I've been wondering about. Because... This, this axe is meant to take a leader of the people to wherever they need to be. And I'm, I'm not the leader of our people. I don't want to be the leader of our people. But damn it all, I'm going to make them listen. And for a while, I'm going to have to be. Until they finally get their act together and become one people again. It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to be a long time. It's going to take me years to do this. But I needed to be able to get to wherever they were. And then be able to get back here. To you. Easily. I don't have all of the powers that you have. I don't have half of the things that you have all been able to do. But this axe is something that came to me. And I cherish it. Because now it can bring me to you. That pillar over there. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. The axe can take me from any dwarven structure, anything permanent built by dwarven hands, to wherever I need to be. But this place wasn't built by dwarven hands. This was built by elven hands. And, and from here, it's so far away from everywhere I needed to be. And I didn't want to be that far away from you. Or have to, to take extra time to be away. So I made that pillar. But, but like the statues, I, I, I didn't want to just make a pillar. That, that, that's wrong. It's going to have to test, to last the test of time. It's going to have to have meaning. So I made that pillar. I made that the pillar of, of sanctuary. To tell that story. To remind people of what really... The foundation of all of this is and the pillar i didn't know if it was going to be me that could make something like that i started out as a mason but that was a hundred years ago 
I haven't built anything for so long that was really mine. I've tried. There was a reason I stopped being a Mason. But I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this because I wanted to be able to be here for as long as I can and only be away for the smallest amount of time so I could be with you and do what I needed to do. I, uh... I, um... Elves live longer than dwarves. And I'm already older than you. You skipped a hundred years. That hardly seems fair. But that's not the point. The point is, I've got a lot of years left. My dad's over 500. My mom... Well, I don't know exactly. I think she's somewhere near 600, but I didn't really feel it was proper to ask. I want to be with you for as many of those years as I can. And he drops to one knee. <laughs> I had another project in mind. It took a while to get back in that mine. There was still so much there. The mine hasn't been reopened since I was relieved from it. But I knew there were some gems there and some precious stones and some metal. And so I dug it out myself. I didn't make it myself because I'm not that good with metallurgy. I thought about asking Otter to give it. I couldn't remember where the hell he was last month, so I decided to go with a local smith. But, um, but I made the box, and he pulls out a stone box that's been carved simply um, with a, a dwarven rune for copper beard on the top. And he opens it up, and it's a platinum ring with a uh, bluish stone set in the center. I'm a pain in the ass. I work too much. I'm going to be away a lot over the next several hundred years. But I'd like to... I'd like to bond with you. In this way. Well, I guess it's a good thing I already talked to my mother about this. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> well, you've seemed very busy. Which has, has been entertaining to see. And that pillar, I didn't really need proof before, but it's a nice reminder. And I know you couldn't track Archie down, but he's been in and out of here. And uh, I actually had him make something for you too. And from within a pocket of my robe, I will pull out my own small ring. Um, also, ironically, happens to be platinum <laughs> because only the best, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll present it to him. I don't have a fancy box, but I did promise you a heart free of regret in exchange for my own. So if you'll take this, then I will accept yours as well. You see his hand shaking as he reaches for it with all of my heart. Oh, I imagine all there's 360 this giant crowd of, of it. elves. <laughs> there's this giant crowd of elves just yeah. watching this. I, was just I kind of imagine say... they're in the, the, in the arch and he has to back up the wall of the arch to kind of be parallel to her. Mm -hmm. Without, so he doesn't have to stand on his tiptoes this time. I want to just a microscopic retcon. You don't have a fancy box. You're in a high elf city. That's got to be like <laughs> fancy box central. Yeah, but she's been really busy. <laughs> fancy boxes go to die. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, fair. I just feel like there are fancy boxes to be had in Farusha. That's all I'm Probably, saying. Probably, but it's it's a little book. She's not carrying around a bag of holding anymore, so. Sure. And she had no idea, like, when he was going to pop in and out. And she has all these <laughs> other things that she has to carry all the time for spells, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so as, 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 they, as he kind of holds her close, and he kind of looks over at the, at the kind of turns, and they're both looking at the pillar, you feel him kind of cock his head. You know, from this angle, that part kind of looks like Granite Bob. And there's a part which has a, a weird sort of a spatial, uh, uh, an, a, like a, a roundish edge to it. <laughs> you and... know, you were looking for a name. Why not just call it the Foundation? <sighs> That's pretty good. Well, you. I knew that I had you around for a reason. <laughs> You're pretty useful too. <laughs> I got my moments. Aw. So, uh, Amethyst, did you have gifts for everybody? Did you have those? Yes. Ones? Um, not an engagement ring or anything. But... <laughs> well, it's a group I marriage. Suppose. We're all like real oh. friends now. Ever okay. since, um, we had all of our challenges releasing the tree from the amber amethyst has been in the back of her mind working on a design idea something um useful but also that would signify what she feels is a bond that she has with everybody that is unbreakable you know she loves andre but she loves you know cadence and ked and everybody here and all of that stuff so much more amplified because of everything we went through together. So what she would have done is she would have been spending this time since working on the refuge. And I've only got a couple more points about that, but um, like for the jewelry, she would have been working on her jeweler's proficiency and uh, worked with Archie with his, you know, ability to do all kinds of metal work. And the idea was to to give something to everybody, to all the heroes of legend that would act as a kind of like the role that she became so used to. I call myself like a taxi bot, like getting everybody everywhere, you know, other than, you know, some plane shift, it was like a lot of my travel powers. It was really fun for me. So I just wanted something that would similar to what Alaric has done, um, make it easier to transport to certain places. So the idea that I presented to Christiana was an object that would allow us to plane shift to Emirate Arboris as well as to Rushama. And it would have uh, it would have the 250 gold value that it needs to. Autocree would uh, work on um, the core and with me on crafting something that has that meets the value and then exceeds it, of course. But it's it's the the focus of her training has been to take these, you know, necessary items that have to be high value or look like this or made of that and turn them into something that's more like what you'd find in nature. So instead of it looking like a gold rod or a jewel or anything like that, it's final form is it looks like a branch almost instead of like just a regular rod it looks almost like a branch it's got an amethyst from um rushama from mount rushama and it's got a piece of amber from when we released the tree and so it would do that and then my hope was also you know it would use the plane shift mechanic to do it but like I would that be something because I made sure the value is over 250 it's something that they could use for other plane shift castings as well correct well yeah so I I think we don't have to worry about the nitty-gritty of like the the dungeon master's guide for rules for creating a magic <laughs> item cool I think at this point you you've taken the time and you're at the power level necessary to create pretty much what you want it to be so boom so then it's got that and then i also wanted it to have um like a send spell so we're off living our lives doing our things but kind of like an sos but also kind of like hey there's a girls night coming up who wants to get together you know that kind of a thing too but like a send spell or something Mm -hmm. like that just brief shots 
um, to be able to stay in touch. And the whole thing, um, she would have worked with Archie to ensure that it has like the natural appearance that she wants. To anybody else, it would look like an ordinary branch token and it's wrapped with some of the vine. We would have taken some small roots from the tree and we would have used our nature magic to, you know, make it kind of wrap tightly and bond it all together because that's how she feels about everybody. So um, the folks that don't have those quick travel things can get to, you know, places faster. So that that's something that she would have been doing in the midst of all of this and working with Archie and their travels and between his adventures. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Everyone gets to stay in touch, you know? If they want. <laughs> But yeah, and then for the nature preserve, she really the only other things that she had is now that it's done upon mm -hmm. there are a few people that she has a special effect that when they arrive, when Cadence arrives, um, anytime she arrives at the preserve, there will be this huge little herd of baby piglets that have like fey constructed armor. So they're like little miniature Roberts. So <laughs> yes, that's like, that's awesome. In, She's always, he's just always there. Because <laughs> sometimes they bring going, him. Right? Wouldn't that be adorable? That's what I was hoping. <laughs> um, Archie's area would have like a, like an amazing forge. It would have a natural look to it. It would look like it just grew out of the ground with stone and, and um, tree work. And it'd be full of the kind of nature stuff that he might not see in his travels to dispel evil that I know that he would love and enjoy. And um, whenever Alaric arrives, there is a spell that dispels all of the chickens from his sight. There is not a chicken <laughs> to be seen anywhere. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody else has anything. That was what came to mind, what Amethyst would think of for you guys. But if you guys have something, like, of course, Ket's Shady AG, mm -hmm. you know, like that has to be, whether that's Ket's like little private domain in the refuge or not, that's up to Kat, you know, it's just whatever you guys would want it to be. So, that's pretty much it, I think, for Amethyst, though. Oh, except, of course, Arwen. Arwen, Arwen everywhere. She has the most pimp little nest, herd, burrow, whatever she wants. It's just all, <laughs> it's just all Arwen. She was just such a necessary thing for Amethyst to get through all of this, that she's got Arwen well taken care of. Very nice. And I think that uh, one of the things that you find in your nature preserve is that there are other Almirage there. Absolutely. And uh, Ar Arwen certainly spends most of her time with you, but, uh, you know, likes to see some other Almirage sometimes. I would hope it is safe. She can roam. <laughs> um, I think that uh, some of the, you know, the, the dark elves that had uh, wanted a place some of them do take up, take you up on your, your offer and decide that, uh, you know, you, you have so uh, graciously made part of the nature preserve uh, to, you know, have an, like an underground, you know, biome. To their design, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and so uh, they, you know, some of them take up residence there um, for a time because, you know, I think as intended this uh this place is you know could be could be a permanent if if someone desired it but in some ways it's my impression is it's a little it's more designed really for it it's there when people need it mm -hmm. and then when they're maybe ready to find something else they move on yep and so i think uh you know at least for a while uh, Zoroth and his mom decide to stay there and uh, he seems like he's doing all right you know all things considered yay huzzah <laughs> <laughs> all right so Cadence do you want to tell me a little bit about how things develop with your you know, you're teaching people the, the ways of traveling. Like, 
how does it start do you start sending out expeditions or is it really just more of like a one-on-one -on -one, hey if you want to go this is how you do it sort of thing um actually she would work more in an educational capacity rather yeah. than than like sending people out or whatever because it's it's been opened to more people mm -hmm. um than it ever was before so she would want to educate people about not just how to you know climb the tree and go from place to place but also to respect every place they go mm -hmm. and to not you know wreak havoc i just i just suddenly flashed on the, the scenes in raiders of the lost ark where indiana jones is teaching archaeology class in the university <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so very nice. And, uh, so we have, you know, some love, lovely scenes for everybody. Does, does anyone else have anything coming to mind or, you know, certainly we don't want to, we can, we don't have to rule out that other things will certainly happen, but it seems like maybe we're at a place where We've we've left all of our our friends here, uh, in a happy place. The the uh, the respite that they deserve after saving the entire universe. You know, the work continues, but it's good work. All right, so I think that does it then. That's a wrap. On the Heroes of Legend. Yay! Wow. Aww. <laughs> 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 it hurts. <laughs> It's like oh. I want to clap, but also kind of want to cry a little bit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so great, you guys. That was some really good stuff. Um, I, I was... Uh, I, I hope that my dog wasn't making too much noise come through on the microphone just because he was barking at the door and whining and stuff uh, more than usual. So it's like, I kept you guys are in the middle of these great speeches, and I'm like, rock it, quiet, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but oh, that was that was wonderful, everyone. And uh, so uh, thank you all. And I I am I'm so grateful and um, pleased to have been able to tell this incredible story with all of you. Thank you, Christiana. It's been a hell of yeah, a journey you. and you've produced yeah. so many thank twists you. and turns. <laughs> so thank you also to everybody who's been listening and or watching, whether you watch live or watch the YouTube VODs or listen to the podcast version. Uh, so many levels is not going away. But I think we are going to take a couple of weeks off just as kind of a, a break. And then we might have a few other miscellaneous things going on when we come back. But a new campaign will continue soon. And uh, in the meantime, uh, I'll be, uh, you know, just check me out on Twitter. I'll be, I'll be talking about stuff. And you can also check out um, on Saturdays. We just started a campaign of Rime of the Frost Maiden, which is the latest uh, published adventure module. So that has two episodes out so far already. So if you if you're already missing more Christiana DM'd D and D, there's some over there. But uh, in the meantime, though, uh, thank you everyone again, and I love you all. Love you more. The adventure will continue mm. yes. on. So, so many, many levels. levels. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Aww. Aww.